Hi, my name is Dr. Arnold and I have made the decision um, to leave the NHS, to quit the NHS as a dentist. I've predominantly been an NHS dentist and I've now made the decision uh, to move into being a fully private dentist. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I've made that decision, um, the challenges I'm gonna face um, in transitioning and the challenges I'm potentially going to face um, as a private dentist, starting out as a private dentist. Uh, watch till the end to get all those thoughts and views and my conclusion. working in the NHS for five years now. Um, I qualified from the University of Central Lancashire in Preston um, in 2017 and in these past few years what I've realized is the difference in the quality of work I produce when I have more time with my patients and as I get to see my patients um, every six to twelve months I'm able to see um, how the results from patients I've been able to spend time with have lasted and how the quality of work, just the finish at the work that I do is much better uh, with patients that I've had the time to uh, really um, produce um, work to the best of my ability. And I'm wanting to do much more of that, spending a lot more time on each and every one of my patients. And in the NHS, um, it's not always possible. Uh, because you're working to a deadline, you're working to time constraints. Um, it's a pressurized system in that respect. Um, and that's not allowing me to progress in terms of providing my patients with the very best of care that I can provide. Um, so that's one of the reasons um, why I'm making this transition from the NHS to private dentistry. Uh, the fact that I want to be able to produce um, higher quality treatments for my patients um, and treatments that I'm proud to also provide for my patients. As a general dentist, um, you get to provide a range of treatments uh, for your patients, whether it's fillings, whether it's crowns, bridges, extractions, root canal treatments, and it allows you to start um, realizing um, certain aspects of dentistry that really interest and excite you. And for me, um, that interest has been with um, cosmetic dentistry and particularly um, orthodontic treatment and how smile makeovers can be produced by laying the foundation of first straightening the teeth. So that's been um, a heavy interest of mine, um, orthodontic um, treatments and I've been investing into courses um, in order to provide my patients with that. And in order to be able to um, do more of this work um, it's not something that I can do um, currently under the NHS. Uh, I've got to provide it privately and I want to be able to do more of um, this type of work, orthodontic work and smile makeovers. Um, so that means that moving into private dentistry will allow me to experience more of that um, and be able to, to have more enjoyment, more fulfillment in my career as a dentist. So, Definitely that's another reason why I'm making this transition into private dentistry. The third reason I would say is the fact that for the same amount of um, time that you're spending doing private work compared to um, NHS work, um, private work definitely outpays um, NHS work. And that's uh, positive definitely because you're getting paid more, but it allows you to be able to um, be able to have a flexible um, calendar. You're able to take time off uh, for breaks, for courses. Um, you're able to uh, be a bit more flexible with your career um, because you're able to earn more um, for um, the same amount of hours you would put in. And I think for me, that's going to be important going forward. Um, I'm able to spend more time with my family, having a newborn baby. I'm able to do a lot more things because there's a bit more flexibility um, now that I'll be 
I'm earning more uh, as a private dentist. Now this is something I've been considering for a while now and it's a process um, to actually make this transition. Once I'd made up my mind that I wanted to now move into uh, becoming a fully private dentist, um, I had a conversation with my principal uh, who owns the practice I currently work at and you know he was very supportive and was actually so supportive that he decided that he would actually build um, a practice where I could then work at as a fully private dentist. So this practice would have no patients and would build it up um, from having no patients to hopefully being um, busy with new uh, private patients. As I was um, providing NHS dentistry before, um, those treatments um, had to be completed. So I've got to complete treatments that I started um, within the NHS. Um, and that meant finishing those treatments um, and making sure that I wasn't starting any new NHS courses of treatment. So that has meant that um, my diary is starting to become um, less populated as I'm not seeing any new NHS patients. I am still seeing private patients, so that keeps me uh, busy enough, uh, but I'm bringing my treatments to a close at the one practice in preparation to move to the next practice and that can affect um, obviously the amount of work that um, I'm doing as well as um, my pay being affected. It won't be the same as months where I was doing um, NHS treatments, starting NHS treatments as well as starting new private treatments. So um, it's gonna affect my pay. That's one thing to consider, challenge to consider. The fact that I'm moving to a new location, um, it means that there's gonna be no new patients at this new location. Um, so one of the key things of the NHS um, uh, provision of dental treatment is the fact that the NHS is a, the NHS is a huge brand. The NHS alone attracts people uh, to a dental practice. Um, so if you're starting out at a new dental practice, which is fully private, um, it means either the practice has to have a great reputation, but as a new dental practice, it will have no reputation. Um, or the clinicians in the practice have a great reputation, which draws in new patients. So hopefully the time that I've spent um, at my current practice um, will help me um, to really attract new patients to um, the next location. Um, patients that have started to uh, maybe see the work that I do online, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. Um, so it's really building a new patient list and this means that um, income will start to flow, um, activity will be low as we're building up this new squat practice. One of the other considerations is the fact that being an NHS dentist, you've got a very um, good pension. Uh, some would debate whether it's still as good as it used to be, but it's still um, a, a, a good pension to have. Um, you'll be leaving that when you're going to become a private dentist. And the fact that with the NHS, you can have some um, assurances or securities. Uh, for example, when the pandemic um, happened and dental practices were shut. Um, as an NHS dentist, um, you were still getting paid similar to your previous levels of payments. That allowed you to still pay your bills, um, take care of any costs whilst you weren't physically working um, at the practice in surgery. So that's something that you'll be forfeiting um, in becoming a private dentist. The fact that there's no fallback like that. Um, so I would have to be um, on top of uh, making sure that there's always emergency funds and just um, money available in case um, I'm not able to work. Let's say another pandemic hit that meant that we were to stay at home um, in a similar fashion. So there are some more things to think about. Uh, pension, do I start a new private pension? Um, yes, I'll be earning more, um, but I need to make sure that I've got provisions for after I finish my career as a dent dentist. So it brings all of these things into play. One of the final challenges I'm gonna face is the fact that um, at this new squat practice, this fresh dental practice, I'll be the first clinician that's there. Now I have been working at my current practice since my foundation year as a dentist, and there's always been 
uh, the security and safety of knowing uh, that there are other dentists, other colleagues um, in the next door in the different surgeries that I can call on uh, for help or assistance. Um, but in this new squat practice that I'll be moving to, I'll be initially the only dentist that's there. Um, so I won't have um, the same amount of support available um, as I'll be the only dentist there. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I've waited and gained some more experience before making a move like this because I've got to the point where I'm more confident in my skills and ability and I feel that I can take on that sort of challenge now but it definitely helps to know that there are other dentists in the building if ever you needed to ask a question. So these are the reasons why I have decided to move into private dentistry and some of the considerations, challenges that I'm facing as I make this move. Um, if you want to hear more about NHS or private dentistry, um, choosing what suits you or what works for you, make sure to check out one of the videos I've done on this topic, um, as well as some of the other videos I've done uh, regarding life as a dental associate. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you at the next one.